All right, guys. I wanted to do a video for a while now about a few tips and general things to keep in mind uh, when deciding to get into astronomy. Astronomy is a wonderful hobby and I encourage everyone to give it a shot. So if you are serious about trying it out, then there are a few things I've learned over the years, things and ideas that hopefully will be of help to you. I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. So you are toying with the idea of getting started with astronomy and want to learn about it. There are a lot of things you can take into consideration. However, the most important aspect to keep in mind, at least in my opinion, is to start small. What do I mean by that? Well, you should try not to go overboard and spend a ton of money on equipment right from the get-go. You want to minimize the effort of getting into astronomy and maximize the experience. This means that you shouldn't get a huge expensive telescope right from the start. The same thing applies to eyepieces and accessories as well. Starting small and with basic equipment will give you the chance to learn this hobby as you observe the night sky. The more you learn, the more you will know what you want to do with this hobby and in which direction you want to take it. As your knowledge about astronomy grows, it will get much clearer what equipment pieces you exactly need in order to grow further. Maybe at one point you notice that planetary observations are what fascinates you, or maybe it's deep sky objects or both, or it's completely something else like astrophotography. Then as you reach that point, you can make a much better decision regarding the equipment you need. There are a few types of telescopes on the market and I've covered the more popular ones in a separate video, which I encourage you to check out. I leave a link down below. But of the existing types, I would recommend either a refractor or a reflector telescope. A refractor will usually be easier to transport and will require little to no maintenance. However, the aperture of refractors is on the smaller side. This means that it won't let in as much light as other type of telescopes do making the views through a refractor a bit dimmer than with reflectors, for example. If you aim for a refractor, then try getting one with an aperture that's the diameter of the front lens of 70 to 90 millimeters. You can get a decent entry-level refractor for as little as 175 bucks new. It will come with a mount, a finder scope, and a couple of eyepieces. A reflector telescope with a Dobsonian design, for example, will be heavier and bulkier, which means it won't be that easy to transport as a refractor. These types of telescopes also require more maintenance in order to keep the views of the night sky sharp. Here I'm talking about collimation, and it means that from time to time you will need to adjust the mirrors in such a way that they are perfectly aligned. It's not hard, but you need another piece of equipment for this called a collimator. So this is something to keep in mind when shopping for a reflector telescope. The aperture size I would recommend for beginners is five or six inches. An entry level reflector will set you back 200 to 250 dollars new. And just as with a refractor, it will come with everything you need to get you started with the exception of that collimator I mentioned earlier. Every beginner telescope usually comes with eyepieces in the box. These are good enough um, to get you started. No need to think about upgrading them just yet. Get to know them first and what they can offer. And then after many observing sessions, you will know what the upgraded eyepiece should be able to do. If you decide to get a reflector telescope, then also get a laser collimator. 
As mentioned before, it will help you align the mirrors, keeping the views sharp. These collimators don't come with the telescope itself, but can be purchased on Amazon for as little as $20. Whatever you do, don't buy one of those cheap telescopes you can get in department stores. With their poor optics, um, those telescopes are not good and will only ruin the hobby for you. So steer clear of those. So yeah, if you want to give astronomy a try, then get an entry-level telescope and start using it. Don't go overboard with the investment. Keep it as simple as possible. Researching and buying a telescope is only part of the big picture. Another part is reading and learning about astronomy. Start with the basics, stuff like constellations and where they are over the course of the year. Also knowing where and when the planets of our solar system are visible is also essential. Learn about light pollution and the Bortel scale. Check out how much light pollution your location gets from which you are observing. There is a great online map which will give you all the information about light pollution you need. A link will be in the description below. Whilst learning about astronomy, it is very important to keep your expectations to a minimum. During your research, it will be unavoidable that you come across some spectacular pictures of the night sky. All these images we can find on the internet today about planets and different DSOs also raise our expectations as to what these objects might look like when we actually look for ourselves through our own telescopes. Well, in all likelihood, your first views of the night sky will be nothing like you see in those pictures and videos. Those are processed images obtained by very sensitive cameras pointed for hours at the same object in the night sky. Our eyes aren't sensitive enough, not even close to pick up such detail. While planets are going to display color, they are going to appear small and with relative little surface detail. Deep sky objects like galaxies or nebulae will be very faint and colorless. This is not a result of a bad telescope um, or a small telescope. It's just that our eyes aren't sensitive enough to gather enough light information for contrast rich and colorful images. So managing your expectations is the key to appreciate this amazing hobby. So you decided on a telescope and started learning about astronomy and now you are thinking about your observing sessions. In order to plan and prepare for these, I encourage you to use your PC and smartphone. There are a few apps out there that are very helpful. The first one is Tellarium. It's an awesome piece of software, one that I've been using ever since I started with astronomy. It lets you look up every object in the night sky and simulate the views at any time and place. You can even simulate the views with your telescope and eyepiece model. The PC version is completely free of charge. The Android app is free as well. However, there is a premium version that currently costs $16.99. The second app I can wholeheartedly recommend is Night Shift. It's a very useful app that lets you plan your observing sessions a couple of days in advance. It tells you what the weather will be like, what planets can be observed and when it is the best time to observe them. The app for Android is free and totally worth it. I will leave a link to um, these um, apps in the description below for you to check out. So yeah, these were a few points and general ideas I wanted to share with you, hoping that it might come in handy someday. If you guys have any advice for people new to astronomy, then please share and leave a comment. I'm hoping that we can create a small information pool for um, anyone interested in astronomy. Astronomy is a fantastic hobby that has given me plenty of awe-inspiring moments over the years. I've learned a lot from this hobby. For me, being outside with my telescope at night is always a fascinating and humbling experience. 
So that's why I like uh, this hobby. What about you? What does astronomy represent to you? Why do you like this hobby? Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.